I'm really happy to be present for this tribute to my dear author, Petros Marcais. Um, I don't know, I'm, I, I may be very repetitive because everybody has been wonderful with the various contributions, so I will try not to bother you with too, ma too many repetitions. Um, I would like to entitle my contribution like that. I mean, how Petros Marcaris is helping us French readers to understand Greece and to reflect on ourselves. Um, well, my path uh, led me to, to Petros uh, because for a number of years, how Cosmo has told, I, I was, I've been an editor of the foreign department at Edition du Seuil, and my job consisted of seeking out and buying mostly fiction and some literary nonfiction for translating in, into French. Uh, I also happen to belong to a mixed European family where we, before reading Proust and Gide, we read authors coming from elsewhere. So this was maybe very helpful for the, the rest of uh, my, my little career. And my predilection tended to go to strong storytellers who were setting their plots in parts of the world which were probably more turbulent or rough, and where the characters were confronted with certain kinds of predicaments. Um, then either they were Russian dissidents, South African, German, Indian, Pakistani, Israeli. Uh, there was not exactly a common den denominator between them, but most of them conveyed their experience of intolerance, injustice, deprivation of freedom, arbitrary, and more generally great hardship in the everyday life. And they had a lot to tell. Well, nevertheless, crime fiction offered all that, a change of scenery, of culture. It is true that, if it is true that a murder remains a murder everywhere, the Swedish context may be different from the South African one. And although I'm reluctant to draw a line between fiction and crime fiction, since I believe there is no inferior genre, but just good storytelling and less good storytelling, um, and I do not myself consider as an my, I do not consider myself as an expert, it is true that I found, like many others, that crime was the best mirror of society. It allowed the author to depict his country in turmoil, to express his anxiety, his distress, his indignation when confronted with a world that was dramatically changing. The Nordic was, were good at emphasizing the eruption of violence à l'américaine in a once peaceful environment uh, and giving also denounced um, the giving up of social models and so the end of solidarity. I did my share with Kurt Wallander for a while, and uh, then I thought it was time also to look around for different horizons. The Mediterranean world had also a lot to offer in terms of criminal activities, as Montalban, Camilleri, and the Marseillais, Jean-Claude Iso, has ho have shown us. And this is how um, our guest author, Petros Margaris, appeared to be the right author at the right place and more and more at the right time. He was going to give first a hard time to the stereotypes, the cliché and prejudices about Greece with which the French stubbornly stuck to. Um, so I took over from Lattes. I got the rights from uh, Diogenes, who by then handled the world rights, and I went on um, with a huge excitement at first. Um, although I assume we are going to focus a lot on the, on the Christ Tetralogy, on the Crisis Tetralogy, sorry, um, I, have a, 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 I have, of course, liked the Che committed suicide very much because it announced already the theme of uh, the loss of ideals to the benefit of opportunism and corruption. But I have a special weakness for, and for the delightful and informative, probably more personal novel, which is called in English, The Nanny, and we called it L'Empoisonneuse d'Istanbul. Because it 
it also showed the, the Im, Im, immensely uh, pedagogic capacity of uh, of uh, Petros um, to how to he introduced us more about the story um, of the small community of Rome, the last remaining Greeks in is Istanbul. Uh, and also it gave him uh, the opportunity to show a rare collaboration between a Greek and a Tur Turkish inspector. And of course the uh, liquidation à la grecque, as we call it, overdue loans, le justicier d'Athènes, the settlement, pain éducation, liberté, and epilogue meurtrier, which is the last one, are, are just amazing. Um, I'm not going to go too much into details because my predecessors have done it very well. Now, why, so why do the novels of Petros appeal so much to French audience? Well, I have first to say one thing about the French readership. We are slow. It, <laughs> one, one has to be patient with us because you don't, um, manage, you, you don't succeed with a first novel or a second novel, maybe with a third, you start arousing interest. It, it has to take some time and it has to been the same with Mankel, it has the, been the same with um, other literary foreign writers. So why do we like you, Petro, especially? Probably first reason, because you have, for us, redefined the genre. You have um, rejuvenated the genre in a way. Uh, you say yourself, I quote you, that you write de uh, detective novels because you believe you can see society better. You can construct your novel better with a detective plot as its starting point. But at, as a modest man, Petros will never acknowledge that he has partly recreated the genre. He combines the roles of crime writer and social commentator and stresses that crime writing provides the best form of social and political commentary since so much of what is happening in Greece is criminal. Therefore, it is not surprising also if a substantial number of readers refer to his observation of the evolving crisis in Greece that fill his novel rather than to political experts. Um, this, and of course, he shows in particular how the crisis affects the ordinary people. The second reason, I think, is because his characters are very authentic and they are made of flesh and blood. Uh, this is precisely among the ordinary people that he found his hero, Kostas Kharito. So, sorry, Petros. You didn't find him. He came on his own and imposed his presence to, to, on, onto you. Um, Inspe Inspector Haritos uh, belongs to the petite bourgeoisie. He's a family man with a, a wife. I think Adriane is wonderfully representative of the Greek tradition, in a way. She's a pain in the neck, although she's a very good cook. Does, and, and Katerina, the beloved Stabon, law student of a daughter. From the human point of view, at first, Caritas is not such a, a likable man. Uh, he's a, also a man full of contradictions. He's a policeman. Moreover, he started his career under the dictatorship of the colonel, and he's even said to have attended sessions of torture. He's conservative, he's a macho, although we soon find out that Adriani is the tyrant at home. And he's grumpy, very much like the French, by the way. He's grumpy and sarcastic. But this man cannot be that bad, since he loves dictionary and the stuffed tomatoes, which is a secret family recipe, as I was told. And his best friend, this is the lovely side of it, his best friend, Zizis, is a communist who survives torture, torture and years of imprisonment under the colonels. So there is already enough here to make him feel much more sympathetic. Actually, what is rather touching is that at the various as the various investigations unfold and inevitably the living conditions become tougher and tougher for the characters uh, who share the, the fate of many others, they all become more and more endearing 
Adriana, Adriani as a very practical woman, I mean, make, makes wonder at home and is a wonderful mother. She, she, she looks after the young ones. Um, Katerina now is married to a young uh, physician who actually gives us insight of the situation of the health service in, in Greek. And she's herself now a lawyer helping the migrants to get papers and a roof. The characters are never static. They evolve with the situation. In the last volume, the inspector has not been paid his salary, which has already been cut, up, cut earlier. And he leaves his car in the garage because he can't afford the petrol. Um, they are very convincing human beings, bearing their frustrations with dignity and philosophy. And they're feeling com com empathy and compassion for those whose lot is much worse. From the professional point of view, there is no doubt that Caritos lives for his job and has a great sense of justice. He's often humiliated by his spineless superiors, but he finds the strength to stand up to them as well as to powerful politicians sometimes. And what is lovely is that um, he has his own code of ethics and he chooses to turn a blind eye from time to time, and especially when he thinks that the murderers are more uh, righteous avengers and the victims are bastards who deserve their fate. Um, and of course, let us not, not forget the, the main character, character as well, which, which is Athens, although my, predecessors, my predecessor has talked very well about, about it before. So um, I have the feeling that actually, now that Athens uh, is a bit deserted and quiet, Haritos tends to, um, to complain about the traffic that has disappeared because of, he, you know, because of the, the, the cars that are no, no longer in use. The other reason is that he's a brilliant pedagogue, as I said before. Not only does he excel at explaining clearly and simply complex economic, economic um, mechanism using Haritos as a candide and using us as candide, as reader as candide, but the crime novel is a vector and a means to describe social and political disaster in Greece. The present situation is related to the past. He insists very much about it and tells us a lot about it. Greece would not be here where it, where it is now if leaders had shown more integrity and settled accounts with this past. But they preferred to forget. And the wounds have not healed and they have never still negative influences today. So he takes us by the hand. Um, he, while he embarks in disclosing the roots of the crisis, the civil war marked by repression and huge poverty that followed the Second World War, the dictatorship of the colonel, the installation of the, the democracy in, in 1974, which marked the beginning of a 30 year disastrous political system with the rotation of these two dynasties, uh, Papandreou, and, and with the triumph of the clientelism, the joining of EEC, which has also terrible replication because of the management, mismanagement of the subsidies paid by Europe, which were meant originally to finance infrastructure, and which initiated also lavish use of credits and people living beyond their means. And the final blow, the cost of the 2004 Olympic game, Games, initially, initial budget, two and a half million billions, official cost 11 billions, probably 18 billions, and which led to bankruptcy. The perception and reception of um, Petros's work in France has, is, um, has also evolved. It is clear that his, this perception 
has evolved along the successive publication. Petros as a virtuoso weaves together a crime plot full of surprises, tasty scenes showing the inspector in his little private and professional world, and the sufferings of his fellow citizens, as well as a description of complex economic mechanism, as I said before. He manages to give a rich and fair picture of the agonies of ordinary people. The reader in the beginning may have been not necessarily more attracted, but quite sensitive by the entertaining qualities of these uh, good crime stories, the, the vitality, the vivacity of the dialogues and uh, told by this colorful, eccentric character, sarcastic, yet compassionate, a very compassionate voice of the destitute. As the situation worsened in Greece and, and became bleaker, um, it started to have serious resonances with, the, with our own social, political, uh, and economic ordeals. French readers have turned more and more to Petros Marcaris as a consi consistent chronicler, a keen observer and commentator of the cries to understand its origin, its development, and how they ca we can be affected as well. Pension and salary cuts, unemployment, destitution, despair, leading to suicide, xenophobia, racism, rejection of migrants, corruption, tax evasion, the progress of extreme right, the decline of the left, and the loss of confidence in our political leaders. All this rings a bell in France at the moment. Petrus has been also in France very generous with his time and accept many invitations and many invitations in festival and panels and many interviews. His sharp comments and merciless judgments are always widely welcome um, and appreciated. I recall one in particular, very moving and impressive, a couple of years ago, you will remember Petros, in, in Lyon, uh, at the Quai du Polar, which is the most important festival dedicated to crime literature. There was a panel which was a little sleep. Um, and all of a sudden, Petros started speaking and describing the changes in Athens. And I quote him, once a paradise at night, Athenians are now afraid of going out, out in some areas. The violence, the intimidation, intimidation of gangs of Golden Dawn, um, sorry, sorry, um, uh, are reminding of the behavior of the Nazi during the Weimar Republic. Um, they are filling the void left by the state, having replaced the police, chasing the mig migrants, helping the old and the jobless. And then you said, what can a writer do? What is the best way to describe reality? Is it enough to remain a witness at a distance or do we have to overdo the violence and the, 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 the trait? Um, the silence that followed your declarations was very eloquent, eloquent because I think Petros was hitting the point. How can you go on writing about a world that is so sick, so unwell, when you have already explored its excesses, neurosis, and turpitude. Well, Petros has been awarded a prize of European crime fiction in 2013, and as I said, has given a lot of, a lot, um, of interviews and participated very li lively. He has more and more drawn the attention of so-called serious political journalists because he's considered to be the only intellectual who can talk about the reality in Greece. As somebody quoted a very similar um, thing uh, from, a, from a critic, if you, and I will quote it again, if you really want to find out what is going on in Greece right now, Margaris is your man. And if you love high quality crime fiction, he can definitely deliver the goods. I'm not so pleased with the the word goods, but I, I, I didn't find it. So let me add that what makes Petros Marcaris so unique 
is his combination of anger of, and compassion, of despair and irrepressible humor, in two words, his richness, his human richness. And last but not least, as somebody said very well before, a writer needs a very good translator. And Michel Volkevich is the one in France. He's the voice of Petros Markaris.